and look forward to serving with him in this historic 113th Congress as we work together to make this a more perfect union. I also represent one of the more diverse districts in the United States Congress. Our district is 25% Latino, 16% African American, 7% Asian American, 2% Native American. It is a district that reflects both the urban as well as the rural components and communities of our great state in Nevada. In fact, Congressional District 4 re reflects the state of Nevada, and Nevada increasingly reflects all of America. And so I believe that is why President Obama decided of all places that he could visit, he visited Nevada last week to discuss the fierce urgency of now in adopting a comprehensive immigration reform by this Congress. The fact that Nevada reflects the changing demographics of our country, but it also reflects the broken system, which is our immigration system. And so as I listen to the President, and as we honor today the 100th birthday of Rosa Parks, I reflect on these issues as a basic, fundamental civil right a human right that is guaranteed to us. So today does mark the 100th birthday of Rosa Parks, an icon in the, just, the, the struggle for justice, a woman who was known as the mother of the civil rights movement. As an African-American woman confronting prejudice and unequal treatment under the law, Mrs. Parks remarked that what pushed her to say no on that fateful day in Montgomery was the simple fact that her mistreatment was just not right, and she was tired of it. She said, and I quote, I did not want to be mistreated. I did not want to be deprived of a seat that I had paid for. It was just time. There was opportunity for me to take a stand to express the way that I felt about being treated in that manner. I had not planned to get arrested. I had plenty to do without having to end up in jail. But when I had to face that decision, I didn't hesitate to do so because I felt that we had endured that too long. The more we gave in, the more we complied with that kind of treatment, the more oppressive it became. It was not complicated. It was prejudice. It was unfair, and she was sick of it. She was tired of the constant drumbeat of injustice directing every minute of her day. She was tired of facing inequality in a country founded on principles of liberty and justice for all. Her act of civil disobedience sparked a social movement that changed our country forever, and she did it because it was just time. So today we honor her courage and her bravery. We remember her legacy and draw lessons from her actions. We take up the cause of promoting more just, fair, and humane policy for all, because that's what we owe Mrs. Parks and all our civil rights leaders. It is our tribute to those larger-than-life pioneers as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. It is that creed of the civil rights movement that still motivates us today. So today, we take up the cause of joining arms with our immigrant brothers and sisters in that spirit. The time is now to lend a hand to those who confront injustice as a result of a broken, immigration system. It is just time. For many undocumented immigrants in our country, they are waiting to start their lives. They are waiting to start a business. They are waiting to reunite with their families, often 
for years on end. And while they wait, children see their parents deported. Students get stuck in an educational pur purgatory and can't attend college and better their lives or get a job in the country that trained them. And mothers and fathers can't provide for their family or care for their loved ones without keeping them in the shadows.